What's up, Sunday Gathering? How you been? I've missed you guys so much. Do you like my homemade Res Life graphics? Not so good. So if you make better graphics, uh, send it send it our way. We'd love to like feature you guys in your art. I know you've been at home doing art and those type of things. So send those to us. Uh, what's been weird about all this online stuff is like er you get to see everybody's animals. This is this is our cat Chewy. Chewy's a Maine Coon kitten, and he's probably like oh eight or nine months old. So he's like he's like getting massive. But I love him because he's just like big and floppy and cuddly. So send us your like crazy cat, dog, animal photos or videos. I would love to gather them all together. We'll we'll come we'll edit him. We'll put them on here together. And we'll have like the pets of Res Life. How cool will that be? Maybe I'll go strap like a GoPro to like one of my goats and like we'll do a time lapse of the goats and whatever they do in the day. So, anyways, that's what we're going on. I want to pass you over to Ashley. Uh, for worship this morning. Ashley and her husband Ryan are going to lead us in worship. What a great joy. Excited to see you guys here. Let's worship. All right, I'm Ashley Morgan Kirk. I'm the high school pastor at Res Life Leewood, and this is... I'm Ryan Kirk. And this is Miss Penny, and she's asleep. This is our little dachshund. She's asleep sleeping. right now. She's going to probably wake up because we're going to sing a song together. So if you have an instrument or you have a voice and you would like to play along or sing along with us, down in the uh, in the notes here, you can find the chord sheet. We hope you download. Take a minute, download that, grab your instrument, and play along.
Hello friends, it's your worship leader, Nick Kaufman, Mommy Sash Philly from Res Life Leewood Student Ministries, and I am so pleased to be bringing the message on this unique Palm Sunday. Now before we get diving into the message, I wanna encourage you to go grab your Bibles, whether print or online, so they can join me in this scripture that's gonna help set the scene. All right, well, welcome back. I want to remind you, for over the last three and a half months, we have devoted our time to the first 19 and a half chapters of the Gospel of Luke. And on Ash Wednesday, 36 days ago, we started the season of Lent, which is a 40-day period in which we honor Jesus' sacrifice to lay down his life for our own lives. And in response, we gave something up or took something on, a good thing. And so I want you to pause the video here and share with someone around you or text somebody about something that you gave up for Lent or a good practice that you took on. So what's really interesting is that during this time of Lent, I actually gave up social media because it was causing me to really um, lose sight of what's really good in my own life. And I was looking at other people's lives, and I wanna be there, I wanna be them, I wanna be with those people, or I wanna do those things. And so I thought, you know, social media is really driving what I'm thinking and whom I'm becoming, and that, that wasn't very healthy. And so um, I decided to get rid of social media for 40 days, and then coronavirus happened, and almost all of my work is online and social media and staying in contact with you all and the staff. And um, so that doesn't work anymore. I almost made it all the way through before uh, these big changes happened. But um, I, thank you so much for sharing what you shared. And I think it's such a cool practice during Lent that we set aside time to refocus on what's drawing our attention and what we can give up in healthy ways and what we can take on in healthy ways. Perhaps it was margin in your life or um, it was a practice of doing healthful exercises or it was giving up desserts for dinner every night of the week. Uh, so whatever it was, I'm just proud of you that you did that. So today I wanna set the scene of where we're at in the Gospel of Luke as we near the end, as we journey towards Easter next Sunday. And so Palm Sunday really celebrates this parade of Jesus coming into Jerusalem and he's announced himself um, as the Messiah and uh, people are beginning to understand through the healings and the resurrections and the, um, the compassion that he shared that this is somebody different. This is perhaps the God in flesh we've all been waiting for. So if you flip open your Bibles or go online to the scripture, we are in the chapter of 19 in Luke verses 28 to 40. And I'm reading from the NRSV. So read along with me. After he had said this, he, Jesus, went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And when he had come near Bethphage and Bethany at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying, go into the village ahead of you. And as that you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. And as he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. You know, in fact, I think we have a recording of that parade. Jesus is coming. Grab some branches.
That was awesome. I'm so glad we had real footage of the parade from 2,000 years ago. Now, today we celebrate Jesus as he now fixes his eyes on the cross. He has paraded into Jerusalem, and now he fixes his eyes on the cross that he's going to. And this is known as the way of suffering, or Via Doloroso. This way of suffering is represented by Holy Week, which launches today, which um, is Palm Sunday, of course. And we have Holy Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and then Maundy Thursday and Good Friday, right? And then Holy Saturday and then we have Easter where Jesus is resurrected. But this week is all leading towards fixing our eyes on the cross and what Jesus is doing for us as he fixes his eyes on the cross and laying down his life for his friends. Now, as we journey into this week ourselves, as we fix our own eyes on the cross, we have, I want to remind us that we have been talking about five central practices of the Christian life, the walk from Pastor Adam's book. And uh, as we go through those, uh, we will begin to see how the open arms of Jesus begin to form us as God's people to in turn share that love of God with others. So will you say those five essential practices with me? The first is worship and prayer. Second is study. The third is serving. The fourth, giving. And the fifth, sharing. And I really wanna focus in on two essential practices that really have affected me. And so if you have your Bible still, I want you to flip open to Psalm 31.5. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And this is also a reminder of what Jesus says as he's on the cross. As he breathes his last, he says, into your hands, God, I commit my spirit. And just understand that Jesus is worshiping, Jesus is praying to God, even in his darkest moment of suffering and death. And uh, some of you may have prayed this when you were younger. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And this scripture from Psalm 31 is actually a, a, a psalm, a, a prayer that mothers would teach their children and Jesus is remembering this from his own childhood and studying the scriptures himself. That even in the darkest of times, in the struggles of a coronavirus, that we still believe there's a faithful God who will see us through to the end, who will bring a beauty out of the ashes. So I want to ask you, how have you been able to worship in the midst of these odd circumstances of coronavirus and isolation. Take a pause right here to share with somebody. The other essential practice of the walk that I wanna focus in on, I wanna dial in on here, is the practice of sharing. As we talk about sharing, I'm gonna head outside where I can worship in creation with you. And uh, I'm gonna take my dog with me and uh, I invite you to come along. Come on. Brownie, come on. Good you know, when I got married about three months ago, um, I inherited this beautiful border collie named Brownie. And, uh, you know, as I received her with open arms, and that really helped me to love her more deeply. And she loves me more deeply. I mean, dogs, they already do that, right? But um, she answers when I call to her. She, she sees me as a master, as a loving friend. And I see her in the, in the same light. And that's uh, really about share that essential practice that I want to encourage you to grow in your own life. Not just with people around you, with the animals, with the nature you're in, whatever it is. Share your faith, a compassionate faith, a faith that puts others first, a faith, a faith that adopts others into your life. That's the kind of sharing that Jesus was focused on and talked about. And just like Jesus, we're meant to embody the goodness of God's love. 
And that love reaches this climax on the cross when Jesus has his arms stretched out wide. He's saying, this is how much God loves you. Brownie. Just like I inherited this dog with outstretched arms, I encourage you to do the same with your walk with God. As we seek together to walk with God in our daily lives, just as I walk my dog. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of a reprise of our song. And I want you to focus on the words. If they're speaking to you, if you're having a hard time right now, or if you just need to be reminded of them. So focus on the words that we're singing in this. Wash your hands and say your prayers, because Jesus and germs, they're everywhere. Stay tuned for announcements. It's time for our announcements. Once again, if you've got like better artwork than this, like send it our way. I'd love to see it. You can like make all of our graphics for our videos. It could be like our intro, our announcements, or our uh, scripture, or benedictions, or any of those type of things. You can make that for us. So we're gl so glad that you joined us this week. Remember to go down below and log in. Like you can like log your attendance below. So we just know who's here. We'd love to know what's going on and see who's actually joined us. We do this again on Wednesday at 6.15. So come back to YouTube. We'll see you here Wednesday at 6.15. If you would like prayer, go below. There's a link there to our prayer requests, and you can submit those requests. Uh, they are confidential, and we will pray for you and your family and your prayer concerns. If you don't want to go to the link below, just go to core.org backslash students, and you can uh, submit your prayer request there. After this, you're going to go to your Zoom small groups. You should have got a link from your um, small group leader. If not, there's a link below for a big group that you can join. Uh, love to see you in Zoom small groups. And then we're all going to walk over to Big Church. Well, not actually walk over to Big Church because we're not supposed to be in the building together. But you can log online at 11 o'clock and see Big Church. See Pastor Adam and the band. It's beautiful. Uh, we'd love for you to join us. Finally, if you want more of this, like you can like or subscribe. There's a button somewhere. Click on that, subscribe to our channel. I believe we finally reached 100 subscribers. Do you think we can get to 200 this week? Let's make a big push. Maybe if we get to 200, like we'll send Chipotle free out to somebody. So make sure you like or subscribe, and we will see you next week.